This week's video is a culmination of some of the 60 second sessions and what I've actually done is I've taken some of these and used the techniques shown to create the image Dragon Keeper. How the video will run is you will have a speed art showing you basically how the image came together and that will just run through, two minutes I think it runs for and then I go into the techniques and these techniques are very similar to the 60 second sessions and in as much as some of the techniques used to create Dragon Keeper image uh, for example the shadows, I'll show you a simple way of creating shadows the warp tool, how that actually works what to think about when you're creating the object overlays and things like that I've managed to cut the video down to under 15 minutes which is really good considering it took over three hours to record it so hopefully you enjoy the format of it and hopefully it just lets you see how everything comes together so without further ado let's dive right into the speed art For me though, the dragon is too dark for the rest of the image and I may dar darken it down later, but at the moment I want to be able to see more. And because this is a smart object, I can double click here and it will open it up in its own tab. So if I now go filter and get into camera raw filter and turn up the exposure slightly. It just lets me see more detail. I need to watch the highlights because the way I've lit this dragon it might blow out some of the highlights. I'm still keeping them in range here. So I'm going to bring them back slightly and just hopefully not too grey. So I'm going to do that. I may lift the shadows slightly as well. Just to around there. Just so that I can see all the detail I'm working with. And then I go File, Save. That will update it in this document and you can see the dragons a lot lighter now so I'm actually going to close that down just so that I'm only working with the one tab
The look that she has here suits this image perfectly, but I'd prefer the hood to be up. So what I've done is I've downloaded a second image with the hood already up, and I'll drop that onto this document. Right, for this one, it looks as if I am going to be really lucky and the photographer hasn't moved and I'll be able to drop these on top of each other and blend them in. So what I'm going to do here is I am going to turn down the opacity of this and I'm going to zoom in a bit. Move the image over by holding down shift in my keyboard and if I can match the eyes up or nearly up like so it means that I can use a mask to bring in the hood and these feathers and we might get away with this one so what I'll do is I'll click OK turn this right up the opacity there so what we have now is this and what I'm going to do is I am going to create a layer mask on this one so it's a reveal all mask if I click the mask and then press Control and I it becomes a hide all mask so I'm going to zoom in a tiny bit further here. Right, because that's a black mask, I need to paint with white. And I've got the soft round brush. very quickly show you how to create a brush. So just go File, New, and let's go for 1920 by 1080. And I'm going to take the brush size up a bit. But I want quite a hard edge on this brush, so I'm going to go back in here, take the hardness right up, and I'm going to create a new layer and click Once. Now, because that's in a new layer, I can scale it now. So if I go Control t and hold down Shift, I can squash that right down. So I have that there. And then just go edit, define brush preset. And you can see that the sampled brush is 1042, which is the area that is selected. The white background makes no difference for this type of brush because it's on its own separate layer. And then I'm going to entitle this cut out. And once I click OK, that brush there will drop into my brush menu at the very bottom here. The reason we use shadows within images is we are using separate images from different locations and different light to bring and merge together to make one image. Well, this is one of the ways I create shadows. And in this case, this is a shadow for the Dragon Keeper. I first copy the layer up. And then I right click on the mask itself and apply the mask. I then go into adjustments and pull the exposure fully down. Command and T or Control and T. And then I place the shadow underneath the object that I'm trying to create a shadow from. I'm also looking to see where the light is coming from so that we can make this look as best as possible. The next part of this is the warp tool and the reason I'm using the warp tool and you'll notice I've used it throughout the document is to try and match areas or bend areas to fulfill the image realization of it and in this case I'm using it to try and warp what I think and how I think the shadow will play on the undulating rocks below. Various tools up at the top allow you to add new anchor points and warp it into the position that you actually think it should be. Once you're happy with it, what you can do is go in and erase the areas that you don't want. And I'll be honest, I don't take the areas fully out. I try and work with what I can see. And as you can see here, what I've also done is I've went, went in and selected this and I'm also trying to warp this area, thinking in this perhaps is how the light falls here, or the shadow will fall here. It might not always be right, but with the final effect, it does tend to give you that perceived shadow. Now, you can go in the wrong direction totally and have a shadow going in the opposite direction of the light, so be careful of that. It can be a little... Uh, fidgety 
when you are doing this but it's definitely worth it in the long run to get the final image that you are after. Once it's created, I'll then bend it into shape again using Command and T or Control and T and holding down the Control button, move the individual points to get it to roughly where I want. It is a fantasy image, but we're still trying to bring in some reality to it. Once I have the shadow, shadows have different depths. And what I normally do is I will create two or three and I'll erase areas so as that closer to the actual object has a deeper shadow. As it goes further away, it lessens, depending again on the light. The shadows are softened by using the Gaussian Blur tool and then once I'm happy with them, I'll blend them all together and adjust the opacity. You'll normally find that overlays are crucial to your composite images. And in the case of this one, I've used various different smoke overlays. And the blending modes for these have been changed to screen because that suited the image itself. Not all blending modes of screen will suit the image. So it's a good idea to go through the different blending modes to see what's going to work for your image. Most of mine I drag in and they become smart objects and then I rasterize them and then adjust them and perhaps, in a lot of cases for this one, create a mask and mask out the areas that I don't want. Now the reason I left creation to the end was simply just to say that don't get too hung up on the images that you're using. Perhaps they will work for your final image, perhaps they won't. You may have to go and search for others or you may have to go and photograph them. But your image will develop. You'll have an idea in your head of the end goal. But because this is a composite that you're creating, the world and your imagination is your oyster when it comes to this. So really don't get too hung up on thinking it must be like this because this is what I've seen in my head. This type of composite just forms itself as you are building the image. Hopefully you got something from that and hopefully you also enjoyed the format of it, showing you the entire image coming together and then breaking down certain elements. I'm also planning on doing this type of video on a Sunday on a regular basis, perhaps say once a month, we'll just see how the, the month goes for shooting. There won't be a video next Sunday due to the fact we're off to Sky for a few days doing some photography, but the 60 second sessions for the Tuesdays and the Thursdays, they'll still be going ahead as I've already pre-recorded them. If you've enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more of this format, just put a comment down below. Uh, also check out the rest of the videos in the channel. If you're quite new to the channel, you'll see that I jump between Photoshop and compositing to tutorials to landscape photography. So it's a kind of mix of everything that I really enjoy and hopefully you'll like that as well. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.